Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and when we last left off, we were talking about the three different types of crustal movements that we typically see, folding, faulting, and tilting, and now we're going to move on to earthquakes dealing with those faulted rock layers, which leads us to earthquakes. Normally at these faults, it builds up, builds up, and then snaps, just like you would break a bone, and that release of energy is what we perceive as earthquakes. This is the distribution of earthquakes worldwide. And what we can see is that the earthquakes, they occur in a pattern. They're not random. So all along the West Coast here, we see earthquakes going all the way down, all the way down here to South America. And we can see they actually make outlines. And we'll come to learn that these outlines are nothing more than lithospheric plates. And usually right at the boundary of these plates, is where we see our earthquakes. If you're located near a plate boundary, you are going to have a tendency to be more involved with earthquakes. It's very typical for us to hear about earthquakes here on the West Coast. But recently, here even on the East Coast of the United States, we've suffered from a series of very small or minor earthquakes. Uh, latest one, I think, being around the 4.0. And then, you know, smaller ones in Manhattan and a little bit south of us can be felt. Uh, it does happen. Remember, we're talking about pressure pushing on the United States from this direction or pressures building up. And ultimately, the stress has got to get relieved somewhere. So earthquakes are nothing more than any movement of the Earth's crust. It occurs when the stress and the pressure build up enough and then all of a sudden suddenly release when that rock or when that area can't hold that energy anymore. Convection cells within the mantle drives plates to move. So if we look deeper within to the earth, we have this material inside our mantle. It kind of flows a little bit because the inner core is like this heat engine driving all this energy is released outwards. It causes hot spots within this mantle. And when we have that, we have hot spots and cooler spots. We get our convection cells. And what happens is friction will cause them to drag and pull these continents or these lithospheric plates apart or in some cases together. Uh, some of the famous faults are our San Andreas Fault located in California. Okay, A fault is nothing more a breaker and a fracture in the rock, just like we've seen with those earlier pictures. Um, can be found be both below Earth's surface and at the surface. Here are some faults in California. So San Andreas is the most notable one running along right here, right along the West Coast. But then you can see we have a number of smaller faults that come into the area. So really, if you're looking at moving to California, you might want to rethink that um, with everything else that goes on there. There's a number of faults that are moving through. Here's a, an example of a creeping fault. So when you build roadways over these and there's a very slow motion or movement of those plates, we can see buckling of road surfaces or even sidewalks can start to get offset. Buildings, same thing, we build them over and you can see that there's an offset here in this whole building. Let's lead just to a number of uh, faults, three major fault types, normal, thrust, and strike slip fault. Uh, and you'll hear the names, they'll actually come back and forth with a different variety of names, um, but the motions are the most important thing. Here's our normal fault right here. Once again, the displacement of rock. You can see how this rock, uh, sorry, this rock layer right here matched up with this one. And you can actually see a slight bending. It shows that that rock was bending, bending, and finally gave way. The difference between a normal and fault is basically uh, the motion of the actual um, uh, land uh, perspective to where you're standing. So we have a normal fault, and we can see here that it's under tension, so the land is getting pulled apart, and when it does so, one side's forced down, one side's up. Versus a reverse fault, it's due to compression, and one side's forced up, and the other one down. Once again, just a displacement of rock. Probably the most important thing that I want you to take away from this is that rock layers are going to be offset due to this motion. When we have these faults, the point beneath your surface where the earthquake originates from is known as the focus. So you can see on this diagram, it's a good diagram, I would copy it down. You can see our focus occurs right on the fault line, but deeper below the surface. Depending on how deep it is, 
and the amount of energy released will depend, will really determine how big of an earthquake we'll have. The epicenter is the location directly above the focus on Earth's surface. So you can see here from this drawing, focus is down below. And then here's our epicenter right here. This is where we would say, oh, it was in uh, California, you know, wherever it may be. Okay, so this is just another focus and epicenter diagram. You can see here the focus right down on the fault. Energy moves outward. Here's our epicenter right up above. What determines the intensity of an earthquake is the depth, like I said before, and the amount of energy released. If you have these plates pushing, 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 and then not moving, not moving, all of a sudden the amount of energy is going to build up so much when it finally does give way, it's going to be big. Like I said, New York City, um, this is going back 2001, a small earthquake, mag uh, magnitude 2.4. Uh, we've had a 4.0, I think it was right off the coast of Montauk nearby. Seismographs are devices that record earthquake waves, and they record that on what's called a seismogram. Seismograms are basically that earthquake occurs and that needle will move. It just is recording that energy, and we're able to analyze these seismograms to kind of pinpoint when earthquakes occurred, how much energy they're releasing, and where they're occurring. I'm going to stop here uh, because we're going to spend a good amount of time talking about seismograms and uh, going over them. So I hope you enjoyed it. Take care.